Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be speaking with J.R. Tolver. J.R. is a commercial insurance agent and he's going to be talking about all of the different policies you need to be aware of as business owners to make sure you're properly protected. We'll see you in there. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be speaking with J.R. Tolver of Tolver Insurance. He's going to be walking us through the commercial insurance that you need to be properly protected for your business. JR, thanks so, so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Um, so JR, basically what we've been doing with the course at this point, you know, the business owners are at a stage where they know they need protection, but obviously, you know, insurance can be pretty overwhelming. Um, you know, am I overpaying and underinsured? How do I make sure I have the appropriate coverage? So what we really want to do is kind of walk them through some of those core insurance, um, you know, p packages, so to speak, that they need to make sure they're uh, utilizing to be protected. Right. Uh, where do you see people traditionally get started and, and maybe some struggles that they run into? Yeah, so I guess when you when you first get started, um, if you end up renting a space, a lot of times your landlord says you have to have insurance. And mm -hmm. in the lease, they'll give you a requirement. And that requirement will have everything from some commercial, you know, general liability to maybe some workers' comp. It's kind of like a the landlord kind of dictates what you he wants you to have in order okay. to do business at his property. So um, the first thing, that's usually the first way it happens with a, a, a new business that's going to go out and rent a space. Mm. In that lease, the lease is going to have insurance requirements. And that's where it gets tricky. People kind of don't necessarily know what each one of them means, how much they should cost, should it be more, should it be less. And I could imagine a lot of people are just going with whatever the bare minimum yeah, is exactly. that the landlord's asking, right? So yeah, because can... it's a rush situation, right? Like think about it like you're at a car dealership and you're about to buy a car mm -hmm. and you've already got all the paperwork done and the financing and then the car dealer says, hey, listen, you can't take this car off the lot unless you show me proof of insurance. Mm. And so it's a rush situation in most cases where people sign their lease. The insurance is kind of the last thing that they do. And so they get it done, and, and you're right, they usually get it done cheaply or minimum requirements. Mm -hmm. And the problem is most of the times they never look at it again unless something brings it back up. And what typically would bring it back up? Is it usually when they run into a problem exactly. and it's that, oh gosh, moment? Exactly, yeah. So the, the, the main thing is uh, general liability. We call that slip and fall, right? Okay. So if you have a, a, a storefront, somebody comes in, slips on a puddle, falls, hurt mm. themselves, breaks something then your general liability or your slip and fall insurance normally covers that. But I tell people all the time that insurance is kind of, there's two sides of it. There's, there's money that pays out. Okay. So in a slip and fall case, uh, your fault, you left the water on the floor, you get sued for 50 grand. Your insurance company should pay out in order to, to handle that claim. But then there's also stuff that pays in. Okay. And I think this is where business owners need to be a little bit more intentional, right? Because if you're going to buy insurance, you should ask yourself the question, what's in it for me? Mm. What if something happens to my business? Will this insurance policy pay me from a law standpoint so that I can continue to run my business? So those are the two sides of the insurance, what pays out. And what pays it. And do those both run through the general liability policy? Most of the times they do. And that's where the, the devil's in the details, right? Okay. So I have a client who um, there was a situation in the city uh, up north where they had a water issue, right? And so my client called and he said, hey, we had a water issue here in the city. It's the city's fault. The water's contaminated. Mm. But they made me shut my business down for eight days. Do I have coverage? Mm. That's a conversation he and I probably should have had before he bought the policy for me. Luckily, he does have spoilage coverage and some utility coverage, so there will be coverage there. But as a business owner, these are the types of questions you should be asking before you buy your policy to make sure it has what you And that's so important because basically, if I'm understanding correctly, you know, we're describing, okay, something could happen to the business that's going to require you know, a big check to be paid out, right. and the insurance uh, company is going to cover that. But in the interim, too, you might have actual business losses from your inability to operate the business exactly. that otherwise are going unprotected um, and unless you're taking care of the details. There. Exactly. And in most yeah. cases in a lease, when you sign a lease, the landlord just wants to make sure that you have coverage that's going to pay out. Sure. Okay. In most cases. Right. So the other side of that is you have to, as the business owner, understand what the risks are in your business and look and see if those things are line item 
in your policy or if you should add them into the policy or buy a different policy. Mm. So I always tell my business owners, like, you're going to buy insurance because you have to. Right. Stop and ask yourself the question, what's in it for me? And normally that gets you into the details a little bit easier. I like that a lot. Thank you. I think that's a perfect background and context on general liability. So I think the next key piece is really workers' compensation, yeah. right? So as um, all the business owners are hiring and bringing on employees, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what goes into that? Yeah, so workers' compensation is a insurance that employers have to have for their employees in the state of California. Okay. So if you have a W-2 employee in the state of California, other states' laws may be a little bit different, but in California, if you have W-2 employees, you are required to take workers' compensation out on those employees. And workers' compensation covers three things. It covers um, uh, medical, okay. so if the employee gets hurt at work, mm. it's gonna cover their, their medical expenses. If they were to die at work, it would pay out some sort of death benefit okay. to the employee's heirs, depending on how many kids they have and all that good stuff. And I'm sure that's not quite as much as like a light of a full life insurance correct, policy, right? Correct. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's pretty much dictated by the state who gets what, how much they get it. It's a little, uh, if you have more kids, you get more. So it's Got a little it. bit of a, of a formula. So it pays, like I said, medical, it pays um, a death expense, mm -hmm. but it also pays wages. So in the state of California, if your employee gets hurt at work and he can't work mm -hmm. because of the injury, the state of California is going to pay them up to 65% of the income that you're already paying them. Interesting. So okay. you get to take them off your payroll and the insurance then kicks in 65% of their income. And that's in the state of California. And is that like specifically for disability or is that any sort of qualified injury? Is so it's, it's a qualified injury where the employee can't work. Okay. Um, based off an injury that they suffered at work. Okay. And we don't need to go into the legal piece yeah. of that. I was just kind of curious. So that's, that's really, so um, just to recap, so um, there's medical yep. death benefit yep. and the 65% uh, basically disability. Pay exactly. Of of and as a business owner, how much you pay in workers' compensation depends on what industry you're in. Okay. Because it's all risk-based. So a roofer is going to pay a higher percentage of their payroll for workers' comp than an office uh, risk, Makes like a lot an of attorney sense. or yep. a CPA. And it's really, it's really important to know that the insurance is, it's an auditable policy, which means that at the end of the year, the state of California is gonna come back to you mm. and say, hey, listen, you told us you were gonna have $200,000 in payroll. Ah, uh, interesting. Did you have 200,000? Okay. If you did, great, you paid us what you were supposed to. Oh, you only had a hundred thousand. Okay, we owe you some money back. Okay. So here's a check. We'll give you money back because well, you, you over more. <laughs> you have three hundred thousand. Yeah. Hey, you didn't pay us enough. Write us another check. So that's one of those policies where it's a little bit more important for a business owner to plan mm. based off the fact that that's a policy that doesn't matter what you pay monthly over the course of that twelve month. It's going to be audited. Got it. And then to follow up, I believe you said that's going to come directly out of payroll, right? That comes through the paycheck? Yeah. So what happens is it's a it's a function of the payroll. Okay. So you can buy a workers' comp policy separately from your actual payroll, mm. but they're going to marry together at the end of the 12 months. Got and it. And then your percentage of workers' comp depends on your industry is going to be a multiplication of how much you actually paid in payroll over that 12 month period. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then I guess the other piece on that from a you know new business owner trying to save money, of course, is since it's a mandatory policy, again, in the state of California, uh, is there much negotiation room for workers comp? Should they be shopping policies? Or is it kind of a everything standard? That's a great question. And I think it comes down to to your budget. So if you have a big payroll, and you're in a very expensive industry, then it makes a lot of sense to look at new carriers, look at new policies every single year. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, every policy is the same, whether you buy it from State Farm or Farmers or Allstate or Hartford. Uh, ultimately, every workers' comp policy is okay. the same. The only difference is the rate that that company charges you for that policy. Got it. Okay. And so it makes a lot of sense for a company who has a ten or twenty, thirty thousand dollar workers' comp expense to annually shop that policy to see if one company is 15, 20% less than the other. That's great. So that's an annual checklist. Exactly. Item. Okay. 
Um, all right, that, I think that's awesome background on workers' comp. The other one, sticking with employees. So, you know, obviously, I hope no business owners run into this situation, but, you know, in, especially in the state of California, you want to be protected anytime you're hiring employees. People t- can get disgruntled, it happens, it's yeah. life. Um, how can the business owners protect themselves from any claims against employees and anything um, that may arise in the work environment? Yeah, so it's very important to know that any type of employee-related lawsuit, mm-hmm. discrimination, harassment, um, anything like that, a, a lawsuit in which an employee comes back to the employer and says, you didn't treat me right, mm-hmm. it's not covered by your workers' compensation. Okay. It's not covered by your general liability. It's not covered by your ENO, your professional liability. Mm-hmm. There's a separate policy that you have to have or an endorsement on one of your other policies. It's called okay. EPLI or Employers Practices Liability Insurance. Okay. And that's the policy that protects the business owners from employee related lawsuits. Okay. And is there um, any sort of shopability with that type absolutely. of policy. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And, and like I said, sometimes you can endorse a little bit of coverage onto your general liability policy. But here's a stat that I think is very important. Um, they say each um, employer, employee to employer lawsuit mm-hmm. on average costs $377,000 between wow. settlement and lawyer fees. Jeez. So it's important to have enough coverage there. A lot of general liability policies will come with ten or fifteen thousand, twenty five thousand dollars. Like an inadequate rider. Exactly. But the fact of the matter is, is if you get into an employee related lawsuit situation, on average it's gonna cost three hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars to the state of California. And those lawsuits have been uh, incrementally increasing. I mean they're up sixty two percent over the last four or five years or so. And I know California kind of has that reputation. Yeah. Of, of that. Um, okay, so EPLI is really helpful. And then actually you alluded to the other one I wanted to make sure we covered for any of the service providers who are watching, E&O insurance yep. is extremely, I, I have E&O insurance, I'm familiar with that one, um, but I'd love to hear your take on yeah, it. Yeah, E&O is essentially, um, I, I like to, when I explain this, I like to, I like to tell people it's very similar to a barbershop because we're used to going to barbershops or beauty salons. So if you walk into the barbershop or beauty salon, you slip down, you hurt yourself, that's gonna be covered by the general liability. Mm. But once you sit down into that chair and the barber starts working on you, and let's say he's cutting your hair and he slices a little bit of your ear off, that's actually covered by his professional liability. Okay. So it's more it's important if you're offering a service that you search for any type of E and O coverage that could cover the type of services that you provide. And so that E&O insurance is the professional liability exactly. insurance. That's yep. where that's gonna slip in. Exactly. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, errors and omission, like I said, I have it. I think anyone who's providing services should have it. At the end of the day, you're never intentionally making a mistake, but mistakes can happen Absolutely. and you wanna make sure you're properly protected. Absolutely, and that's one of the things, I think it's all industry specific, but if you're a service provider and you know that or there is an E&O policy that covers the service that you provide, mm. you should look into it. That was a good point. So are there certain, uh, and not to say that we need to highlight all of them right. right now, but are there certain professions that would p- potentially not be covered? Well, I mean, if you think about like a, a clothing store. Got it, right? okay. There's not a lot of yeah. E&O coverage there. You're just kind sure. of buying and selling goods. But anytime, anytime you're providing a service to someone, um, just search and see, hey, is there an E&O policy mm-hmm. out there that could cover the service that I provide? And, and I think the biggest thing with insurance is it's not emotional. It's just it's just business, yeah. right? So a lot of times people get attached to, oh, it costs this much, or I don't want to pay that much, or nothing's going to happen. And the fact of the matter is it's just a great business practice yeah. to figure out which policies are out there that um, are good for your business and then make decisions based off of the risks that are out there to decide if I'm going to purchase those policies or not. Yeah, of course, you never hoped that you're going to be using them, but if you do end up needing to be using them, you're going to be really glad you went ahead and did this the right way. Um, So the other piece that I think is really important, and and this one I think a lot of business owners maybe don't understand fully or maybe it just gets glossed over, is the umbrella policy. 
Um, how important is an umbrella? And if you could give a little context of what exactly it does. Yeah, so an umbrella is, is I think it's extremely important. I think it's one of the more important policies and probably, unfortunately, one of the ones that's most overlooked. Yeah. And what happens with an umbrella is uh, if there's anything that, that happens from a claim standpoint that exceeds one of your underlying policies, so your general liability policy or your automobile policy, you have a big claim, it's going to cost one3 three or four million dollars mm. you only have a million dollars on your underlying policy if you don't have an umbrella that other three hundred thousand dollars it's going to come from somewhere right. and i tell people all the time claim flow is is threefold it starts with insurance that's where um claims always start they okay. start with your insurance coverage if you don't have enough insurance it's going to kind of trickle down to your assets and that's when you start talking about whatever you have saved in retirement whatever equity you have in your homes Things like that. Wow, yeah. And if you don't have enough assets, then it trickles to your income. Okay. And in the state of California, your wages can be garnished for up to 10 years to satisfy a judgment. Jeez. And so that's where the umbrella, very low cost way to bring all your policies together comes from. So, I mean, especially if you're in a high income situation, it's almost a no brainer. I mean, you definitely want to make sure you're protected there. It's a no brainer just operating a business, yeah. to be perfectly honest with you, because there's so... We're in such a litigious society that it makes sense to just create a package that is going to holistically protect your business. God forbid there is a claim. Yeah. You let the lawyers do the work. And how important is that? Because I've actually heard some stories uh, from the legal side of things that when a policyholder has the umbrella, obviously the insurance company is a little bit more motivated to make sure that they're tackling that really quickly yep. and potentially I think even settling sooner. So it kind of helps avoid some of those stressors. Um, and I don't know if that's just anecdotal uh, information, but have you happened to see that be the case in your yeah, experience? Yeah, I mean, the insurance company is basically a team of lawyers. I mean, what you're doing when you buy insurance is you're hiring a team of lawyers and, and, and a bank, yeah, right? That's a good way to put so it. So yeah. if your lawyers <laughs> lose, you have a bank there that's going to pay out. But they don't want to okay. pay out. What they want to do is they want to defend you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the lawyers kind of come in, they defend, and they try to settle it out. Which is why insurance is so important. It's, it's, it's a great way to, to hire a team of lawyers without like having that, that, <laughs> that high like you know retainer fee or yeah, anything yeah. like that. But it's super important to know and understand the risk that your business is going to pro um, provide, mm -hmm. open you up to. And then make sure you have the right policies, a.k.a. the right lawyers there to defend you. And if they can't defend you, then you have the bank that's going to pay the claim. That makes a lot of sense. So we've really tackled all of the major insurance policies that are available to business owners. I think one of the things that will be really helpful too to enrollees is understanding the difference between kind of a brokered agent and then someone who's with one of the more traditional right. insurance companies that we're kind of used to seeing on TV. Um, can you kind of walk us through maybe what some of those different dynamics are? Yeah, again, depending on your business. Um, so brokers are a little bit different because they don't represent a company. Mm -hmm. They kind of sit in the middle between companies and people that need coverage. Mm -hmm. So what a broker does is a broker will go out and he will talk to three or four or five different companies on your behalf as mm -hmm. the business owner and try to use his expertise based off of your conversation with him to configure the best policy with the Got best it. company at the best price. Makes right? sense. Captive agents, the more traditional State Farm or Farmers or Allstate, they kind of sit with one company where they really represent, they're an agent of that brand. Got it. And so normally in those situations, those companies have policies that the agent knows pretty well mm. because he only works with that one policy. And it may or may not totally fit your needs. It may or may not be the most cost-effective policy. But by hiring a, an agent that's with a captive company, you basically have an access, if there's a claim, you have a person, an advocate, the agent, who's going to be able to really kind of like sit in between mm. you and the company and make sure that things are going the way they're supposed to. And I've noticed that because I've seen situations where when you were operating through a broker, um, maybe you were able to get, you know, like you said, an independent um, uh, package, so to speak. Right. But 
if the claim is actually being um, you know, re uh, requested, paid out, whatever you want to call it, um, you're then having to work directly with the insurance company and they're kind of in the abyss, so to speak. It's more you taking exactly. almost like a DIY approach as how you handle that. Yeah. Um, has that been pretty much the traditional Yeah, experience? I mean, at the end of the day, any good broker or good agent, um, you know, we, we sell these policies because we want to make sure that our business owners are protected. And so whether you have a broker or an agent, um, the responsibility should be on that person to help mm -hmm. in the event of a claim because that's when you really need them. Yeah. And I think that uh, agents, captive agents, probably have a little bit more pull with their respective company Makes than sense. brokers would have across multiple companies. But at the end of the day, put the broker or the agent to work. Make them work for you if there's a claim and help you get as much out of it as, as, as possible. I love that. That's a great framework. So I think then that pretty much walks people through, um, just to kind of recap the major ones here, we have general liability. Yeah. I like the example, kind of slip and fall protection. We have uh, workers' compensation. Again, there were three, I think, critical components of that. Let's see if I can get them. We had Medicare, death payout, and disability Medical, protection. Yeah, Medical, yeah, exactly. Excuse me. Um, uh, as far as the workers' comp goes, um, we then touched on EPLI, uh, which is really critical employee coverage, more or less, if you have any disgruntled employees, yeah, so to yeah. speak. Um, and then we did E&O insurance, which was really the professional liability insurance. And then kind of last but not least was wrap it all under the uh, protection of an umbrella. Exactly. Right? Um, that's awesome. So I think this certainly was helpful for me. I'm sure as everyone's going through this, this is going to be a lot of information for them to digest. Uh, what we'll go ahead and do, I'll put together the worksheet for you guys to all have access to as well that kind of gives those definitions um, just so you have that one pager. That'll be really helpful. Um, but Jared, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, this course. is awesome information. I wanted to add one more thing about the workers' compensation because I think this is important and it's often o overlooked by the business owner. So what happens with the workers' compensation policy is the business owner is excluded from coverage. Okay. So the workers compensation policy only covers the employees of the business. It does not cover the business owner themselves. It's really good to know. Yeah. So it's very important, I think, for a business owner to consider life insurance, mm. to make sure that they have some sort of health insurance, and actually to make sure they have some sort of disability Absolutely. income policy. Yep. Because if they're an employee, the employees have all those things, but the employer is, ex is excluded. Therefore, when looking at workers' comp, as a business owner, take a second to think about yourself, decide, hey, do I have enough life insurance? Mm -hmm. Make sure that if you get hurt and you can't work, are you gonna have to take money out of mm -hmm. the business or will you have a disability policy that can replace that income? And then obviously your health insurance, make sure your health insurance is what it needs to be. I'm so glad you brought that up because actually on the financial planning side, when I'm working with clients, disability insurance is easily probably the number one thing that's neglected. Right. And statistically speaking, we all have a much higher probability of actually running into a disability problem than a, a, obviously a death problem. Um, yet I think so often we have life insurance and lack disability insurance. And that's a, a big mismatch that I tend to see a lot in financial planning. So I'm really glad you did bring that yeah, up. Yeah, they say one in four um, people will have some sort of disability claim. It's crazy, yeah. And because you're a business owner, you know, workers comp, really covers work-related injuries. But mm -hmm. as a business owner, you can buy a policy for yourself that covers any sick, hurt, or can't work, right? So mm -hmm. if you get sick, if you get hurt and you can't work, whether it's work-related or not, having that disability policy would um, help um, help with your income. Yeah, and as uh, the owner, I mean, any sort of disability is gonna have a huge impact on the business, Absolutely. especially if it's not even at work. Um, you can't neglect that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a big piece. Um, awesome. Well, again, JR, thank you so much. Um, I know this was awesome information and I'm sure everyone really appreciates you joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much again to JR for the great information on commercial insurance. Make sure you're taking action and we'll see you in the next episode.